first of all uh, thank you so much uh, good morning bangalore i would uh, lovely to see all of you here i have full full house here as normally in bombay and delhi we have late comers we have people walking outside but i this is just lovely to see a such apt attention and a full house thank you so much thank you navel for inviting us uh, and giving this opportunity to re represent our our ecosystem uh, i don't know whether you sequence this but you start in alphabetic orders uh, ashwat anna ajit so i don't know it, it's going to be a long day so i'll try and start as quickly as possible uh, since my previous speakers uh, mentioned about um, what is the, what business they are in I, i think maybe i'll do a quick one uh, we are we are in the business of storytelling we are we are we make high quality content highly engaging and stories which connect minds and hearts and that's the business we are in the in the business we today started with the business of food uh, then we went on to home if you have food and home then entertainment is the best business next coming in the sequence so what i'm actually whenever we see a publisher on the stage normally it starts working in the mind that you know is tv working is digital better or is it technology you know this is the contest that in publishers keep going and i'm going to take a step back and look at last 15 20 years even as recent as last 5 years and and see what is the underlying thing that we see we observe uh working for the brands and we believe it's the it's the storytelling and 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 that's the thing that i'm going to touch which professionally generated content is some is a great unifier which is touching the hearts and minds of consumers which allows the brands to connect better tell their stories better and create a long lasting impressions so but before i go there i just want to put the context of how we look at the industry now instead of looking at tv digital print radio the way we look at the business today is actually three sets of three buckets it's not very distinct buckets we know there are overlaps in this ecosystem but essentially it's divided into branding performance and shopper marketing or commerce right i think what we have seen if you look at 110000 crores in the industry today roughly 60 65% of the business is still in the business of brand building when i say brand building it's about storytelling it's about connecting emotions it's it's telling telling like like ashwat mentioned about category building making sure that the proposition is clear in the consumer's mind and we see that this 65000 crores most of the established ecosystems have 75% market share there now i mean digital would be roughly 25% i'm including digital mostly branding not the performance part right so which is wherever you put ads and storytelling to uh, uh, to increase awareness consideration preference and creation of intent what is and the underlying factor when there are a lot of long tail content today getting getting in the social platforms but when we look at watch time when we look at branded inventory being aired and people using uh, uh brand ads to tell their stories to consumers one of the underlying factors is 95% of that content 90 95% of that content is still professionally generated content and and i am including news sports music in anything which is professionally generated that that is helping consumer attention watch time viewership and therefore telling a brand story so that's that's the 75% of the industry yes there is a lot of down funnel mid funnel generates after the intent is created there is a lot of industry spends now moving into performance click based ecosystems downloads anything anything to lead to a consumer action so while there is a lot of money being Uh, spent on intent creation we feel there is a, a, around 30 35% of the spend is going on now a click based or a consumer action based ecosystem again this is mostly dominated by digital social platforms including ott here also when we look at and and there is a lot of short form video also get but here also when we look at what are the what are the content which actually gets view time consumer retention viewer metrics uh, uh, more attention 50% of this also is actually uh, pgc content which is professionally generated medium form or long form content 
may be delivered in shorter formats. I think, and that's, that's again the power of content which is driving brand performance. And the last bit is commerce. Uh, obviously, this is where the commerce sites dominate, shopper content. It's, it's, it's more about buying. Again, a lot of investments now sh uh, is going into investing behind PGC content to gain viewer metrics, consumer retention, and consumer attention. And, and, and that's an interesting part. Why would sh like telecom, payment apps, shopper marketing invest in PGC content to increase customer attention and customer loyalty into their, into their ecosystems? So that's the context in which we are working. So for me, or for the, for the company that I work for, I think what is underlying among this is that it's quite natural. It's, it's probably commonsensical to know that you know, people naturally pro would probably resonate more with storytelling or more with stories than with logic. While a mix is important, as Anna said, at the end of the day, we are talking to the minds but connecting to the heart. And that's where I think the whole proposition of Disney Star both in te television space and in digital space works, that we are the masters of storytelling. And, and a lot goes behind the scenes. While we, while we see a lot of content that comes on television, on OTT space, even, even on social platforms, what, is the, uh, what goes behind the scenes is often ignored. I think a lot of direct consumer connect, research to bring out the consumer truth, to help understand their aspirations, their beliefs, their cultural nuances, and, and, and their emotional connects, which helps us bring these stories alive. Now, the proof of the pudding is not just me saying this, but this, look at last 20 years of Disney Star. They are dominating in every language. We are, we are number one in almost all the states. And, and a long history of storytelling, which some of the stories go on for two, three years. Some of the stories goes on for 10, 15 years. That's the level of consumer connect that we are creating on a daily level. Um, this is, obviously, this is just not a research or a, or a direct consumer connect. We also go into social listening. We have live dashboards of how, what are the buzzwords? What are the, what are the people thinking? When we change stories, what's the immediate consumer reaction? Uh, what is, and a lot of times we also be, uh, face a, a reaction from consumers that this, is in, this story is not what is resonating to you. We immediately change the storytelling. We bring in new trends, new uh, ways of what aspirations are, what people are beliefs are. And that's how that, that in turn helps us fine tune and, and make sure that we are number one in each of the storytelling. Yes, we react to numbers. We also look at viewership numbers. We do analytics to make sure that these, whatever we have thought through, whatever we have researched, heard, is actually working in the market. Uh, over, uh, at this stage, if I, if I just look at the magnitude of the content that we create, it's probably around 1.25 lakh hours of content every year, capturing over 200 billion minutes of consumer attention. And that's the magnitude of content creation that we are doing. What you see at the end of the day, what consumers see at the end of the day, is, is popular content, cult culturally resonant, and a diverse form of content across sports, general entertainment, uh, 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 programming related to reality shows, uh, prime time content shows, new programs. All of these shows is what you eventually see. Even today, what we would have probably have almost two decades of where digital platforms have come in, uh, new age social interactions are happening, short form video has emerged. Even today, television today offers 400 million unique audience in India. And that's huge. The next best platform today offer around 400 and 450 million devices. It's not consumers, devices. So that essentially means unique audience a television platform offers through, uh, through this various set of programs is actually 400 million extra exclusive new audiences. That's the level of magnitude that Disney Star has been able to capture over the last two decades. Even, and I'm, I mean most of you marketers uh, are aware of this or probably can do the research, even a lot of UGC platform content where your ads are appearing today are actually PGC content. Kids, music, GC content, reality show snippets. The, look, at, look at probably top 40 channels subscribed by on YouTube. 
all of them are GC or all of them are PGC content or sports content. So the, the amount of brand building even on social platforms today is dominated almost more than 50-60% by PGC, PGC uh, programs. While I'm obviously here putting my hat on Disney, I, I wanted to take a look at what is the underlying factor. We, we did third party research, we, talk, we work with our clients, we also look at what is the success formula probably that PGC is delivering today. And I'm not here trying to say in TV or digital or anywhere. At the end of the day, it's the content affinity storytelling which, which works in across all mediums. One of the th core values that we have seen that what benefit offers is is the co-viewing. I know a lot of us do personal viewing, personal devices today, but what co-viewing allows brands to uh, brands to gain advantage is when there is co-viewing, there is increased attention, there is increased emotional response to ads. And that's, this is not just me saying it, it's a third party research that we have done. There is an increased response, there is increased conversations around it. Now that's something that brands love, right? It's not just, yes, personal experience, personal space is good, but we want people to share experiences, talk about our brands, therefore increase our longevity rather than being a transactional deal there. The last but not the least, we create intent. One in four actually go on to search. Now I know search is a reflection of intent, but a lot of people are, we are talking about a cross section of established categories, new age categories, uh, fast moving, slow moving uh, consumer durables or cars, one in four actually searches for, and therefore that's the level of intention creation. So to me, apart from storytelling, allowing that to happen on platforms which allows co-viewing actually works in benefit for brands on a longer term, longer term basis. The second biggest advantage what we have seen across in various research across years is the attention span. I know a lot of us in the last decade or two believe that consumer attention span is waning, emotional bonding, brand love, loyalty is all waning. But what we have seen is when you choose your type of content, when you choose where their brand stories come, I think there is a big equivalence of what the impressions are. When you look at UGC content, if you index UGC content as 100, even on television, we have seen around 13 to 15% improvement in, in, in consumer attention. And as the quality of program improves to a entertainment programs or a reality shows or cricket, it can go anywhere between one and a half X to three X. Now this is the, this is actual consumer research of delivering equivalence of an impression. So not all impressions are equal when you look at brand building and emotional connect. And, and that's precisely why a lot of people actually select sports or, or prime time or selective content. And, and commonsensically, we all know this, right? I mean, when we watch a avatar in a theater and avatar in an OTT platform or avatar uh, snippets on a YouTube, all these story is the same. The platforms are different, our, our, our experiences are different, and the amount of pre registration that happens on our consumer mind and memory structures are absolutely different when we look at uh, which platform you're watching. We have seen, and as you can see from uh, the numbers here, we, we, we are easily seeing when we look at high quality content. Now, Big Boss is just an example. We have seen that in South, uh, almost 20 to 50 percent improvement in brand metrics. Now, whether it is recall, whether it is intention to purchase or consideration. And, and as we move into a, even a high quality event like cricket, we see downloads, we see registrations, we see reduction in CPIs. All of these can actually be tracked when we look at high quality content advertising uh, or storytelling and then you look at mid funnel and down funnel metrics. Uh, and, and by the way, we, uh, we took an example of, we, we think sometimes uh, new age brands don't need. If you look at last five years, almost India, India startup story, 75 startups have built their brand on PGC content, high quality PGC content, cricket, reality shows, and entertainment content. And that's the level of storytelling that they, and, and some of these, you know, sometimes we feel a product or a feature or a consumer USP can get lost, but all of these brands today stand strong as, as we move forward. 
And this we have seen in the OTT space also. Now that we have Hotstar, which has been almost there for almost eight years, we have seen when we put ads on a UGC content versus PGC content on an OTT platform, there is a distinct advantage that we are seeing even on the digital platforms. Uh, we have also measured brand equity, uh, a combination of brand metrics, and we are seeing almost a 1.5% increase, almost a 50% increase over general content versus a professionally generated content. So to me, when, when Ashwatha are talking about brand storytelling and when we talk about that stories to resonate across a certain scale and be, wants to become a household brand, I think increasingly PGC content can get your story on a longer term benefit, uh, uh, longer term benefit. I'll take two examples, and, uh, and, and, and probably this is a slightly more contextual. You would have known in the last 12 to 18 months or maybe two years, we have seen FMCGs have gone through various, uh, uh, various issues, right? Sometimes it's inflation, pricing, sometimes it's economic, sometimes it could be an impact of Russian war on, on financial structures. We have seen, but what, what we did is we looked at all FMCGs together and looked at what are, where are the outperformers? Okay, and we saw, uh, this is based on Kantar panel research, we saw outperform around 11%, brands which have grown around 11%, they have actually increased their spends on PGC content by 23%. So that's, when you, in, see these are outliers. So we have seen across, some of these brands actually became outliers and have actually grown in volume, not just in, 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 uh, in sales or in rupee value, but in actual volume sales, they've improved by improving their spends on PGC content and on uh, mainly on television. And we have seen even sub-quality of that. People have increased prime time original content, first viewing content has performed better than even taking average content. Now that again shows increasingly our belief that when you get into high quality atmosphere, high quality platform, high quality engagement, you can be an outlier. And I thought maybe FMCG is fast moving. We, we also started looking at, okay, what about something which is more durable, something which is a more long-term purchase, so once in three to five years. We looked at, uh, even on a, you know, on a traditional platform like television, we looked at pe when cars, when you are launching cars or doing facelifts, when you're below 1,000 GRPs, actually the brand metric starts effect, it started affecting cars, the brand metrics of cars. And when you're, uh, and it, it's negative when you're at a below a threshold level. And we just didn't look at brand metrics, by the way. We looked at pre-campaign and post-campaign sales. And we, we observe distinct difference between people who have spent on high quality content, engaging content, and got their stories in, uh, through, through, through that. And th this is something that we have seen. And I know at the end of the day, maybe we have strong reasons of co-viewing, we have attention span, we have actual ROAS working for brands on PGC content. But we as marketers know that is, that's not the end of the story, right? PGC content definitely offers more value than just brand metrics. At the, look at the associative marketing, associative marketing it offers. Most smart, smart marketers have started using this whole characters that we build, stories that we build, the daily engagement that we build into their, to bring in their brand. So Ashwat, maybe I'll have a proposal by in the next half an hour with you to, to get, get your story into every household. Uh, so maybe I'm putting my sales hat a bit, bit more. Uh, but here is, here is where, look at the characters that we build. Those characters last three years, five years, some of them have social equity higher than A-lister celebrities. When, when one of the characters tweet, her, the, the, the traction or the like, uh, like comments that she gets is higher than Shah Rukh and Akshay. That's the level of influence that she is holding. Now, we have hundreds of characters. We build, we, we, uh, we build every year, every three months, every six months. I think mo smart marketers have started using characters to establish that influence, not just within the ecosystem. We are not stopping there. Some of these have social equity, 
and if you look at our platforms, if you look at our characters, we can almost claim closer to 100 million reach outside our platforms. That's the level of influence that we are talking about. So while we are aware of celebrity influence, we are aware of in the recent phenomenon, grassroot level influencers like normal people doing influence. This is the mid funnel influences that we are talking about, where we can not only just associate, create associative value, we are also talking about creation and, and curating content to make sure that both in platform and outside platform, we can help your brands grow. Uh, yes, we know as age, as we come off every three to five years, we continue to innovate, we continue to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, what works for brand metrics and make sure that we can present the brand in a, in a much better, much better context and, uh, and content. For example, this last month we created on a traditional medium where we feel that it's more passive viewing, we have actually tagged 600 600 to 650 tags we have created. For example, if there is a bike chase happening on a movie, we can actually now put a bike ad Aston band there. Now, that's the level of uh, uh, contextuality we are creating. Now, maybe a, it's a bike ad or it can be an insurance ad. It can be a topical ad. So we, have, we are increasingly tagging our content to make sure that how can brands be presented in a contextual manner. And we have just launched this last month. Even across digital, we, are, we have spot ads, we have pause ads, we have billboards, we are making sure that there is lead generation now possible on OTT. There is, uh, there is 3D build, uh, uh, breakout ads which can actually create a complete launch day impact. So a lot of innovations that we are creating both in the content space on television and in digital space. And, and, and at the end of the day, we, we cannot talk anything today without addressability. And that's something that we are now creating in, in the last three months, three to four months, we have now created, in television, we can create addressability. So now we are we have tied up with Tata Play DTH to make sure that you can now target metros, six metros, eight metros, using television content. So we are, we are driving that, uh, we are now talking to Airtel, we are m trying to make sure that we can now offer you addressability on televi using television PGC content for brands which are probably metro focused or wants to reach a certain segment of audience rather than, you know, spray and pray. So that's something that is already there. If you look at the OTT space, we are building a lot of third party uh, integration and therefore targeting possible both on lifestyle choices, consumer durable ch uh, 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 ownership, whether they're paid or uh, uh, free user, almost 1,000 plus cohorts are possible, not just in entertainment space. We have built the almost 75 plus cohorts actually on cricket. It's the first time, by the way. In cricket, we can now do targeting. Not even internationally, a lot of targeting is not possible on live, live sports. This is something that we have now done in India. I mean, I'll just give an example of creating 75 co cohorts. That essentially mean we have to run 55,000 streams to make sure that we, these streams can be available to various choices and brands can use those streams to advertise specifically to their consumers. That's, and that's the max. We, if we go beyond this, the system will fail at this point in time. So that's the level of addressability we are creating on live cricket and on PGC content in the OTT space. So I would like to summarize my thoughts into probably three essential points. One. Uh, and maybe this is a slightly slight deviation from a lot of us wanting to believe that all impressions or all, all, all viewership is same. I'm willing to stand here and, and say that all impressions or all impact is not the same uh, for brand building. I think there is, there is a definite case of difference of when you watch a program, where you watch a program and how, how loyal or how, how, what's your attention span on that program, whether you watch it for one to three seconds in a short video space or a mid form anywhere between attention span of five to ten seconds or whether you give us half an hour to two and a half hours of viewing time and therefore your brand gets registered there. So there is a definite impact, for impact journey that consumers have and therefore in the mid funnel or in the down funnel engagement metrics. And, and we are willing to work along with clients. We have many examples even for a mobility brand or a or an established brand or a long duration or a long purchase cycle brand like consumer durables, the, how does all of this impact 
ROAS for, and business outcomes. That's something that we are, we, are, we are in the journey of working along with the clients, and that's something that we have time and again proved that there is decisive and significant impact there. Last but not the least, association, character influence, addressability, and innovation is, com is raising the bar. So I would suggest, yes, we are in the business of building long-term relationship with our consumers and helping brands create that better ROAS in the industry. I know, I know it's, I know it's, if you, there are many choices in this world if you want to move one pebble at a time, but when you want to move a mountain, PGC works. Thank you.